So thank you very much for everyone to join this meeting. And this is Jun Jian Chi, an assistant professor at the EC department. I just joined Stevens this August. Before that, I was an assistant professor at the University of Central Florida for about three years. And today I'm going to talk about power grid cybersecurity. So the problems related to cybersecurity that we care about in the power system um, research area. Before going to the details about cybersecurity, let me first provide an overview of my research. Currently, I mainly work on four problems. Uh, the first one is distributed microgrid control, in which we develop distributed algorithms to coordinate uh, different types of distributed energy resources, mainly uh, interfaced with the power grid by inverters, to make sure that the system oper operating condition is good. And the second topic is cascading failure and grid resilience, in which we want to understand why and how cascading failures can actually happen in a system that is commonly uh, considered as very as being very reliable. And uh, how can we actually identify the critical component in the system that play critical roles for initiating and propagating the failures, and then further to develop uh, mitigation strategies to to reduce the risk of large scale blackouts. And the third one is about application level cybersecurity, especially those related to the power system uh, applications. And uh, I will mainly focus on this area today. And last but not least, I also work on central feature management based uh, applications, especially on dynamic estimation of the bug power system and also for the microgrid and uh, also the generator uh, parameter calibration based on central feature measurement, which is uh, actually a real problem in the industry. So for cybersecurity in smart grid and power systems, it's, it, it is not just in our research, it is happen, it was happening right, in the real system. For example, in December, 2015, there was a major cyber attack incident in the Ukrainian power grid and in that incident, the attackers actually gained a illegal entry into the distribution company's compute and scatter system. And they explored for some time and finally figured out how they can actually utilize the HMI to disconnect the circuit breakers. And finally, what happened was more than 30 substations were disconnected for over three hours in the very cold winter. And uh, more than 200, the thousand people lost power supply. So in power systems, we also study security, but when we study security, we usually just restrict ourselves to the MS1 contingency analysis in which only one component will be lost. However, in this incident, we can see that more than 30 substations were disconnected and also even more feeders and lines were disconnected. So it's a very extreme uh, event. And the system is actually is not prepared to this type of uh, very extreme event. And for my research, I mainly focused on the application level. So we don't hear too much how an actual cyber attack can be launched, and but we care more about the application. So if an attack can actually happen, and uh, what will be the impact, and how can we actually improve the design of the application so that we can be more attack resilient. And I started this line of research back in 2015, 2016, and uh, was involved uh, several projects by DOE, OE, and especially when I was working at Argonne National Laboratory. So for example, I had a project uh, from DOE, OE on cybersecurity for renewables, distributed energy resources, and smart inverters. I believe that was one of the very early projects that especially looked at this issue. And in that project, we identified several major and typical threats on the DR and also uh, targeting the microgrid distribution grid and also even the transmission grid. And uh, I think one conclusion was, so if we have a large scale integration of distributed energy sources, the risk for cybersecurity may be increasing because many of those DRs will be uh, owned and controlled by the end users, not by the utility. So the security level may not be that high. 
and uh, they are more vulnerable to be attacked. And also compared with the attacks uh, against the smart meters, if you can control the distributed energy resources, actually the impact can actually directly um, happen in the system. And we developed a, a very general research framework for this line of research, such as including the subphysical threat modeling, the DR resilience analysis, and also the prevention detection response at different levels of a system, including the sub layer, the physical device layer, especially for the part electronics uh, devices, and also the utility layer in which we can leverage more available data for the prevention detection response. And later at UCF, I had another project which looked at a similar problem, but more from the perspective of big data and deep learning. So here, for example, in, in one of the problems that we looked at in those projects was that severe attacks on the DR control can actually impact the system stability. So can that happen or not? So we want to answer that question. We take a very simple two area system as an example. So it's the Quindu two area system, which is popularly used for oscillation studies. So we added some aggregated uh, DERs at some buses. And uh, so here is the, this is the transfer function. The input will be the power of the DR and the output will be the angle difference between the buses. And uh, for this particular system, so this is the border diagram, we can see that there's a um, natural frequency around upon 17 hertz. And this can also be validated by the simulation result in which we okay, end the disturbance with the frequency of around upon 17. Actually, the magnitude of the oscillation will be increased a lot. And uh, in power systems, in order to damp those oscillations, usually we will design power system uh, stabilizers or PSS. So the problem is, of course, the natural frequency and the magnitude for at the natural frequency can be reduced a lot. But at the same time, to lower um, peaks at different frequencies, one lower and one higher, can also be created if we add the PSS into the system. And uh, for example, here we have a lower uh, frequency at the point zero five hertz and a higher frequency at the point sixty five hertz. Those two modes can be actually made use of by the attackers in order to launch successful attack to um, impact the system stability a lot. So from the attacker perspective, they can actually uh, collect the data from the system, such as the frequency, and then do some data analytics to identify the modes within the data. For example, based on the uh, spectrum density estimate or the popular Promney analysis, Actually, it is possible to identify the uh, frequency at 0 0.05 hertz mode. And uh, if that happens, actually the attack can inject um, some additional signals by compromising the control of the DER. So the output power of the DER can be changing at the particular frequency identified at 0 0.05 hertz. So this is the impact of the system. We can see that the magnitude of oscillation will be increasing. So at the very beginning, it's OK. And after some time, after the attack was launched, we can see the magnitude will be increasing, and the system will lose stability. And also, if the magnitude is big enough, the protection of the system may operate, and some of the component may be disconnected. Beyond to address this problem, actually, we have some attack detection approach based on the domain knowledge and uh, such as by implementing this deep dissipating energy flow approach, we can actually identify where is the source of this type of attack. And uh, if we can disconnect that source, such as this DR at bus five, we can actually reduce the oscillation and address the system stability issue. So another problem that we are looking, we were looking at is the attack on distributed microgrid control. So on the left hand side, we have the sub-physical system for microgrid control. So here we have the several layer in which we have some agent which exchange information between each other, relying on a sparse communication network. And here we have the physical layer. So we have a circuit breaker here. If we can open this circuit breaker, the microgrid will be operating at a islanded mode. 
And the DG needs to rely on its own local information and also the information from the neighbors in order to uh, coordinate with each other. And the problem is if we can design some coordinated attack on the voltage and the real reactive power measurement, we can actually make sure that the attack will not be detected. So we have a mathematical proof for that uh, and det detectability. And here we have some results just showing the difference between the case in which we only have load change. So here at T equals 10, we have some load change and you can see, okay, the control can drive the system to a new uh, steady state operating condition in which the DGs will achieve consensus. And if we have the same load change, and in addition to that, we add some attack, we can make sure that, okay, the, the system response will be exactly the same as the one we had before, of course, for the compromise amendment. But however, the actual system working condition has already been changed. And also, we are also looking at the attacks on IoT load. And uh, several point here is the first, we need to make sure that the attack is realistic, right? We cannot just uh, assume we can make any change, any amount of the load change at any time. And we need to obey some constraints. And also, it has to be stealth. So we need to actually explicitly include some typical detectors into the attack model. And uh, either the attack, attack detectors based on the engineering domain knowledge or some even more advanced uh, AI-based uh, attack detection approaches. And uh, we are also developing machine learning based approach to generate the targeted signal. And uh, uh, at the same time, we can minimize the chance of being detected. And another point is, okay, the attack model itself should be model free. We cannot assume that the system model is uh, accessible by the attackers. And we need to have a model-free approach and uh, to help us to generate the control signal and uh, that can track the generated tag signal. And also we are also looking at the defense strategies such as by leveraging the asymmetric information right, between the operators and the attackers. So this is the last slide. So, in the future, I think several problems are still very interesting, such as the cybersecurity for microgrid control and also for IoT based loads. And also, at the same time, I think it's important to have a real foundation, right, for the power system cybersecurity study, not just looking at different types of applications one by one. And we need to have a more, more general methodology. And also, we are working on hardware testbed for microgrid control and cybersecurity, so in which we can really do some tests. And also, I'm actively looking for different funding opportunities, uh, NSF or DOE. And uh, I think there are actually um, a lot of opportunities, especially like for DOE and uh, in their solar office, right? So they, they do have a lot of interest on cybersecurity and targeting the integration of the DRs. So, with that, I would like to conclude my presentation and uh, I would be happy to entertain questions. Okay, thanks very much for the exciting work, Junjuan. Questions from the audience, please. Okay, Junjuan, I have a question for you. And what you've uh, talked about basically is mostly defensive measures, right? Now, when somebody attacks your system or network, and then you know how to basically spot them right away and uh, have some sort of uh, internal mechanisms to mm -hmm. mitigate uh, the potential uh, devastating blows. I just wonder if there's any early warning system that you could develop uh, before the attack arrives at your gate, for example, and you know, hey, this is coming and I, I know how to uh, stop it. And also if you attack, can you also launch an instant counter attack? I'm asking some uh, sort of uh, far fetched mm -hmm. questions. Yes, I think early warning is possible, right? You need to have a better attack detection approach in which you can look at the features, right, within the data that can tell you, right, some early warning like uh, metrics or kind of uh, methods and uh, showing the information right, that the system has been attacked or it at least it has some risk of being attacked. 
And I think that's an active research uh, topic right now. Of course, it's not that easy because sometimes it may not be that easy to distinguish the actual system disturbance in the system and a attack, right? So the system has fault and it has different disturbance all the time. And how do you distinguish the actual disturbance in the system and our abnormal sub-attack? That, this is a very challenging problem. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have a question uh, in the chat box. How does your attack detection approach work for stealth attacks? What is the model of stealth attack that you use for your research? Uh, what, do, what do you mean by self, uh, self attack? Self attacks. So yeah, for, for example, in, the, in this work, so we, we think we need to have a successful defense only if we really understand the more advanced attack models. So we can utilize the data collected from the designed more advanced attack model. Then we will be having a more successful defense strategy. If we only consider very simple, naive ways of doing attack, then I don't think we, we will be very successful in doing the defense. So that kind of um, interplay right between the attack and the defense I think that that should be uh, some interesting problems that can be discussed. 